In this video, we're going to talk about a rolling motion of a rigid object. Let's suppose that we have a uniform cylinder. So let's draw a uniform cylinder. And so that's basically looking from the, the top or the bottom. And this cylinder will be rolling on a surface. So it's going to be uh, rotating like this. And as it rotates, the center of mass will move a certain distance uh, so that we have both the rotation and translation uh, motions involved here. So that, let's say that the new position is going to be here after a certain time. So the cylinder has rotated and has reached this new position. Uh, it has a radius R and it's going through a certain angular uh, displacement, theta. So this is R. And as it moves, it's basically going to cover an arc length S here, which will be the same distance s the center of mass will travel in the rolling motion okay so i have a uniform cylinder whose radius is capital r it's rolling without slipping Uh, on this horizontal surface, when it rotates through this angle theta, the center of mass uh, moves a distance r theta. So when you have rolling without slipping, it's also called pure rolling. Okay, that means rolling without slipping. Okay, as the cylinder rotates through an angle theta, uh, <clears throat> this point P at the bottom of the cylinder is basically uh, going to this point P prime and the distance between P to P prime is S arc length R theta is also the distance traveled by the center of mass. Since this is a uniform cylinder, the center of mass has to be right in the middle due to symmetry. Now, since the center of mass uh, has a displacement r theta, we can find the velocity of the center of mass. Velocity of the center of mass will be the distance in tra it travels per unit time dsd theta the dt, that's r d theta dt, that will be r times omega. So omega is the angular speed with which it's rotating. And acceleration of the center of mass will be dv center of mass dt, that will be r d omega dt, it will be equal to r alpha. So in pure rolling, when the cylinder rolls 
uh, through an angle theta so that we have an arc length of r theta uh, drawn by the bottom point. The velocity of the center of mass is going to be equal to r omega. Acceleration of the center of mass will be equal to r alpha. And now you can think of this motion as a rotation around this pivot point. Okay, so we have this pivot point here. So we can think of the rolling motion as rotation around this pivot point. So if you ask what is the total kinetic energy of a rolling object that's rolling without slipping, that's pivoted at point P, uh, I can look at this here again. Uh, so, I find that because I'm moving through an angle uh, theta here, uh, first of all, there's going to be, due to the circular motion, a velocity r omega uh, to the right at the, at the top point and r omega to the left at the bottom point. So that's point A, point B, let's say this is velocity of point A, this is velocity of point B, that's pointing to the to the left. This is due to pure rotation. But then I have the translation of the center of mass, so V center of mass is equal to omega r, so that will add up to this, so velocity of point A will be r omega plus r omega and velocity of point B will be r omega minus r omega. So I will find that this is a combination of rotation and translation. So if I look at the kinetic energy of this rolling object, this is going to be equal to 1 over 2 moment of inertia with respect to the pivot point P omega squared, so that was my pivot point P omega squared, and by parallel axis theorem, uh, so if I make some space here, parallel axis theorem tells me the moment of inertia with respect to a rotation axis going through the pivot point P will be the moment of inertia for rotations around the center of mass plus m r square where m is the mass of the cylinder. <clears throat> so I will see that the kinetic energy is 1 over 2 i center of mass plus m r squared omega squared, so that will be 1 over 2 i center of mass omega squared plus 1 over 2 m r squared omega squared, that is velocity of the center of mass squared, so this will be 1 over 2 i center of mass omega squared plus 1 over 2 m v center of mass squared. So this will be my final answer. Basically it says the kinetic energy consists of two components. Here I have a pure rotation uh, around the center of mass and here I have a pure translation of the center of mass. Okay. Now, let me look at these components of the motion in more detail here. So let's take a look at pure rotation motion first. So this is the one where I have the cylinder only rotating around its center of mass. Um, <clears throat> so I put the center of mass right in the middle. That's the center of mass. Um, 
it's rotating around the uh, rotation axis going through the center of mass. So due to circular motion here, I will have V is equal to R omega at the top and V is equal to R omega at the bottom. Now, if I have pure translation of this object, that means there is no rotation, then I'm going to have the center of mass um, that is translating. So the center of mass has a velocity v center of mass the object is translating to the right since there is no rotation the top point is also translating to the right with v center of mass the bottom point is also translating to the right with v center of mass so for this motion pure rotation i would have 1 over 2 i center of mass omega square as the kinetic energy and for this one, I would have 1 over 2 m v center of mass square as the kinetic energy. So the rolling motion is the combination of the two. I have translation plus rotation that is rolling, no slipping. Uh, in this case, the cylinder is rotating and translating. So I have for the top point here, uh, velocity of the center of mass plus r omega. This is rotating with angle omega. So the center of mass is moving with velocity of the center of mass. And this point, uh, the, the contact point has a velocity uh, is equal to v center of mass minus r omega but we have found that for pure rolling or rolling without slipping velocity of the center of mass is r omega therefore this bottom contact point has no velocity zero which is why we can also think of this motion as uh, the bottom contact point P being a pivot point for rolling motion. That's another way to interpret it. Okay, so the combination of these two gives me the total kinetic energy K1 plus K2, that's the rolling motion, 1 over 2 I center of mass omega squared plus 1 over 2 M V center of mass squared well, V center of mass is equal to omega R, so I can also write here 1 over 2 I center of mass, V center of mass over R squared plus 1 over 2 M V center of mass squared. And remember, this also uh, comes from this interpretation due to the parallel axis theorem. It's really a rotation for a pivot point going through the uh, bottom contact point. That's I center of mass plus MR square is the moment of inertia. Now, as an example, if we look at a cylinder that is rolling down an incline. So I have a cylinder at the top that is released from the top and it reaches the bottom uh, after a certain point in time. So this is going to be have as radius r, it's going to be rolling with angular speed omega, it has a total mass m and when it reaches the bottom the center of mass will have a velocity v center of mass and it will have angular speed uh, omega. So let me delete this. So this is actually starting from rest and then it ends up uh, rolling at the end. And this is going through a 
distance of h on the vertical axis. Okay. So if I look at the uh, energy of the system, there is an initial potential energy that is equal to mgh and final potential energy I define to be zero. So the change in potential energy is minus mgh. And I know that uh, the total mechanical energy must be conserved here because I'm assuming I have no friction in this case. Okay, so if there is no friction, then the change in kinetic energy will be equal to minus the change in potential energy. So this will be equal to mgh. So this starts from rest. V initial is zero, omega initial is zero. So the center of mass has no velocity at the beginning. So I release it from rest and it goes down this incline. So this is going to be uh, translated into the kinetic energy of the system <clears throat> so that's one half uh, i center of mass omega squared plus one half m v center of mass squared that's the kinetic energy associated with rolling motion and v center of mass is equal to omega r uh, so i can calculate the final center of mass velocity by substituting here uh, omega is equal to v center of mass over r so if you do that you will find a v center of mass that is square root 2 mgh uh, divided by m plus i center of mass over r squared so that's one application of um, energy approach for an object that starts from rest and ends up rolling without slipping uh, down an incline as it descends